I'm Joni Tabor, and I suppose I've known Glenn the Third longer than anyone here because I'm his mother. I'm Glenn Tabor Jr., Glenn's father, and I guess that makes me Gat too. The name Gat 3 is very interesting. I am a junior, Glenn Tabor Jr. His grandfather is Glenn Tabor Sr., of course, and he is Glenn Tabor the third. So the name Gat 3 is extremely interesting. He was always tapping, tapping and beating on stuff all the time, even as a little, a little boy. And uh, he would get out my pots and pans. The next thing I'd know, he'd have the spoons just beating on the, uh, beating on the uh, pots and pans. He was very young then. And he was very young, probably four, three or four years old, very young. He's always had an interest in rhythm and music. It has always intrigued him. Glenn was very young, and he wanted to purchase some drums. So we went into the papers and we found some drums and we purchased them and he immediately began to adjust them and work with them. It drove me crazy, of course, but we took the drums and put them over at the church since I was a pastor. And so we didn't have to hear all of the beating. Glenn really uh, got the studio bug when he asked me if he could go into the studio with me on my Christmas album to record his drums. I contemplated that and I thought, yes, I want my son to be on one of my albums. And so we went to the studio and Tony Creaseman, I'll never forget what a kind gentleman he was when I asked him if it would be all right if my son played on one of the songs and he'd be happy to accommodate that. He was a left-handed drummer. My son was right-handed. He placed the drums in the formation so that Glenn could play the song. He was in total awe of all of it. The instruments, the board, he was particularly intrigued by the board, and I knew he was smitten with studio work. He wanted to, when I became a singer, Christian singer, and traveled for 27 and a half years, he wanted to run my sound. I've always known that, that Glenn would be successful at whatever he set his mind to be as even a small child. He was so highly intelligent, taken after me, of course, mm -hmm. and he made such great high grades in school and so forth. I even had teachers come to me when he was really young, maybe grades, it was grade school, said, came to you, both of us, and said, your son's not really trying. And I said, well, what's his grades? Well, they're perfect, straight A's. I said, what do you want me to do? Well, you need to get on him. I said, He's making straight A's. I don't need to get on him. I'm not going to get on him. After Glenn graduated, I found out that he skipped a lot of school. I had no idea he was skipping school because he had that straight A average. And so he told me later he would do all his grades. He was bored with school and it, he needed a challenge. School was not a challenge for him. It came easy. And so he would go skip school and go to his private little studio he had built and record. He and Susan would stay in school, Susan would. She was the good girl. And then she would come and meet him after school and they would record. Now how I really found out about this was when he graduated, you had to fill out all these papers, you know, to buy the, the all the materials and the hat, the, all that. And the principal called me and said, where I'd signed to, to purchase all of this, the principal said, you didn't sign this. It doesn't match his signature all through the years. I said, oh, yes, I did. She said, no, it doesn't. Come to find out, he had been signing my name all these years when he had skipped school and so forth for excuses. And I didn't know that when I actually signed. That was the first time I'd signed anything for him. I thought that was really funny because he had a, was a straight A student. I don't know that I ever realized that this would become his career. I thought he would be a doctor or a lawyer or something else. But then when he asked us to go to full sale, we realized how um, how much he, it meant to him to be in the studio and how he wanted to make a career of it. The music business was so difficult, and I knew that. When he said he wanted to start his own studio, as a mother would have there are trepidations about anyone starting a new thing, especially as young as he was. 
in his early 20s and venturing out on a difficult journey to run a studio, to make it successful. But I knew that if he wanted to do it, he would accomplish it. And seeing how great he was, even with me as a soloist, how he treated his people and how he treated the guest musicians. And um, he was just very good at it. I knew he'd been successful. He had arrived when he started winning all these awards, yes. Grammys and so forth. Right. I thought, wow, huh? not that he will ever consider himself accomplished. He will always be growing and always learning and always expanding. His hard work has really paid off and his love for music. And I think he, he learned that from me and from the experiences I allowed him to have when I would go in the studio. When Glenn started his own studio, I knew he would never quit expanding, never quit improving, never quit making it better and better and better as long as he lived, and he certainly lived up to that. And I know a few secrets I'm not gonna tell. He's even told me further things, more things he is planning on doing in the future. It's not stopping here. It's amazing some ideas he has for the future. It's been very interesting to watch Madeline and Julia grow up here in the studio, watching them as children, having them on my knee, and now they're part of this team, which uh, Madeline has begun her own division of GAP3 Productions, and that would be in the video um, arena, and has become very successful in her own right. And Joni, she and her team are filming us today. That's true. He's very much like me in the fact that he's never satisfied. He will always be pushing the envelope. He'll always be expanding. And I see that now around me as I'm in the studio, but I know how he is. He will never, ever be satisfied. There'll always be another hurdle to jump. I've been in the studio many times recording, and yet I look around me now and uh, after 27 years, I, I can't even begin to believe that it's expanded to the extent it has. It's beautiful. He's done some terrific work. I love the way he's named the rooms, um, and I, I love the lighting. I love the whole thing, but it's very different than when I first recorded here many years ago.